very warm welcome to each and every one of you as we join together to worship God this morning. Today, we reflect on Jesus as our shepherd and his command to Peter, feed my lambs. Psalm 95 verses 1 to 9 Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God. We are the people He watches over, the flock under His care. If only you would listen to His voice today. The Lord says, Don't harden your hearts as Israel did at Meribah, as they did at Massah in the wilderness. For there your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though they saw everything I did. There is a call, an urgency to worship him with a heart of thanksgiving, because he is our God, our creator, the creator of the universe. But there is also a warning. If only you would listen to his voice today. Do not harden your hearts. The ancestors tested and tried God's patience, even though they saw everything that he did. Father, we approach your throne room of grace this morning. We declare and acknowledge your awesomeness and the awesome things you have done for us individually and as a family of those who bear your name. You gave us the greatest gift we could ever receive, the gift of salvation. You shed your blood so that we might have life, life everlasting. And you continue to lavish us, pour over us and in us your goodness, your mercy, your grace and your love every moment of every day. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and help us worship and help us to hear our Master's voice. Amen.
Father, we come before you this morning, our lives an open book before you. We come to seek your forgiveness, for our sins are many, and our lifestyle is far from the standard set in your word. We ask the Holy Spirit in this moment of silence to show us the areas where we have failed you. You love us so much and you want to have that beautiful fellowship with us each day. And yet, as we read in the psalm, in spite of recognizing your goodness in our lives, we have chosen to ignore your voice, to disobey you, to make promises that we fail to keep. Our thoughts that give birth to our speech and actions have failed to please you. We are the church, your family, and we bring before you the failure of the church to be the salt and the light to this world in desperation, 
in failing to share your grace, your grace and your mercy with those who are suffering, the marginalized and the struggling, in meaningful ways and failing to be a witness for you. We confess the sins of the nation and her leaders for broken promises, for not upholding the principles of good governance, for failing in their accountability to those who elected them. As we confess, we seek your forgiveness in the lines of the hymn. Who can sound the depths of mercy in the Father heart of God? For there is a man of sorrows who for sinners shed his blood. He can heal the wounds of nations, he can wash the guilty clean. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus, have mercy, Lord. We thank you that you are a God of forgiveness and mercy. We pray in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 21, verse 15 to 19. Jesus reinstates Peter. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Shall we pray? Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, We thank you for bringing us together this morning. And Lord, even as we prepare to listen to your word, we pray, Lord, that you will give us hearts that are willing to listen. Hearts that are willing to obey you. We pray, Lord, that you will keep all distractions away and that we will be totally focused, listening to what you have to tell each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord, for Dante, for her willingness to sit at your feet and learn from you the passion that she has, Father, to share your word. We pray, Lord, that you would just anoint your word this morning. That the words that she speaks will be words that you have for us, spoken boldly to challenge us into action. We pray and ask all of this in your matchless name. Amen. Good morning everyone. It gives me great privilege to be able to share God's word once again. Um, so before we begin, let's spend some time in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your word. Thank you that even though we are unable to gather physically, we have the wonderful privilege of worshipping you and of partaking of your word, Lord. Lord, whatever we may be doing, wherever we may be, I pray, Lord, that at this moment that you would help us to quieten our hearts and minds and give us attentive minds. Give us ears that we may hear and hearts and minds that will help to understand your word. And Lord, may by the power of your Holy Spirit, may you transform us into action. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me share my screen 
Um, and so as I begin, began to prepare for, um, this morning's message, um, this thought, uh, this topic of feed my sheep came into my mind. And I was also, um, intrigued by the character of the good shepherd that the Lord, good Lord is to each one of us. And so, um, we go into this passage of scripture, um, in John chapter 21. And before we look at the specific gospel reading that was read to us from John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17, let's take a look at the setting. Um, the setting of uh, a bunch of disciples, including Peter, who had gone back to the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee, the place, very place that they met Jesus for the first time. And these were Jesus' beloved disciples, the inner circle. They are the ones who had journeyed with him. They had witnessed his teachings, his miracles. Um, they, they've been in awe of Jesus. They, did, did, they pledged their lives to follow him. They even uh, competed with each other to be his um, beloved. They wanted to know which one was the greatest. And so here was a bunch of disciples who had pledged their lives to be with Jesus. But as they spent time back on their boats, for me, I got this sense that maybe they were a little deflated, a little confused and doubtful, um, lost, not knowing um, where they go next. And sometimes, um, just like some of us, when we face challenges in our lives, when we face unexpected circumstances, sometimes circumstances which are bigger than we can ever comprehend, we may choose to go back to our comfort zones, even though even though we know that there is a greater, greater calling on our lives. And so maybe, maybe they were stepping back to, come to their comfort zone um, simply so that they can safeguard themselves. But we see in today's text that Jesus, after having had a meal with the disciples, gently calls Peter aside. So again, Peter this unique character, full of passion and impulsive in every way, ready for uh, to give his life for Jesus. We know that a few days before, he too had betrayed Jesus. He too had um, declared that um, he doesn't know Jesus. He had denied Jesus three times. And somehow, as we read today's text, Many of us may think that Jesus is giving Peter a second chance. Another chance by asking him three times, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me more than these? Um, and so when Jesus asks him, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon in his usual self um, and says, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. And then Jesus responds, feed my lambs. The second time, Jesus asks, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he once again says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then Jesus says, take care of my sheep. And the third time, he said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter is almost offended, says, of course, Lord, Lord, you know, you know all things and you know that I love you. And then he says, feed my sheep. So for me, um, two things come out here. Firstly, why did Jesus ask Peter three times? Was it to give him that opportunity to correct his denial of three times? Or was it that Jesus was inviting him? with every time he asked him to a deeper relationship with Jesus, a more intimate commitment. 
uh, Peter in his responses um, replies that he loves Jesus in more an affection uh, uh, and more a love of a friendship rather than the kind of agape love that Jesus invites him into, an unconditional love. So it was that deeper relationship that Jesus was seeking after. And if you and I too, like Peter, respond saying, yes, Lord, we love you, you know that we love you, then Jesus' command to Peter and to each one of us is to feed my sheep. And so let's look at these three questions. Do you love me more than these? And Jesus is asking the same question from you and me today. Do you love me more than these? And if we say, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Yes, Lord, I want to give all of my life to you. Then Jesus calls each one of us to feed us the sheep. So let us look at this whole idea of feeding the sheep. And as I pondered on it, um, I, I asked myself, what, how then should I be as a shepherd? What is my role as a shepherd? Um, and I, I came across, um, I, I, I was led to read um, Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 2 to 6, which says, um, this is, a, this is um, God's prophetic message that came to the Israelites uh, or the, the shepherds of Israel. And God says, God's message came to me, son of man, prophesy against the shepherd leaders of Israel. Yes, prophesy. Tell those shepherds, God, the master says, doom to you, shepherds of Israel. Feeding your own mouths. Aren't shepherds supposed to feed the sheep? You drink the milk. You make clothes from the wool. You roast the lambs. But you don't feed the sheep. You don't build up the weak ones. Don't heal the sick. Don't doctor the injured. Don't go after the stray. Don't look after the lost. You bully and badger them. And now they are scattered every which way because there was no shepherd. Scattered and easy picks for wolves and coyotes. Scattered, my sheep, exposed and vulnerable across mountains and hills. My sheep scattered all over the world and no one out looking for them. Let's pause and ask for a moment. Do any of these um, condemnations resonate for each one of us today? I couldn't help but examine myself and ask, um, am I sometimes slow to um, complete my mission or follow in God's footsteps simply for my convenience and comfort? The Lord's condemnation says, Woe to you, shepherds, and you only take care of yourselves. Are we sometimes slow to move out of our comfort zones? Or even as we tend our sheep, are we only thinking of our best interest? It says, You eat the curd, you clothe yourself with wool, you slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. Are we, as shepherds only, thinking of our own interest. Are we also looking out for the lost? Says you, do not strengthen the weak or heal the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. So something that really struck me was, sometimes we are so comfortable worshipping, um, teaching and preaching and uh, being amidst those who are like-minded. I was reminded of um, our Lord Jesus as a good shepherd. He leaves the 99 um, and goes after that one lost sheep. Um, so today, let's ask ourselves, what is our pasture? Where is our pasture? Where, where are we called to minister? It may be our homes. It may be our workplaces, the schools. It may be our own church. Yes, our church, where in Sunday school we teach um, the youth 
the young adults, the men's fellowship, the women's, uh, the women's of mothers' union, right? Um, it may be with the elders. Many are the sheep out there. Today, um, are we seeking the lost? Are we looking out for those who are injured? Are we caring and tending and feeding the sheep spiritually? Um, and if you look at Jesus as our good shepherd and as our role model, he knows us by name. When we hear his voice, we know him. Do our sheep know us? Do they know and do they feel that we care for them in each of our communities? And a shepherd, as Jesus, as our shepherd, he would lead us by still waters, by green pastures. And he is the one who is willing to lay down his life, his own interest for the sheep. And today many youth, many young adults are giving up on faith, especially Christianity. Walking, um, meddling with different types of beliefs. And some, most of them believe that um, your salvation, your mental health, your, your um, success in life is up to you, is within you. Whilst each one of us has immense capability, we know that when we journey with the Lord, that we are truly blessed. And it is through the nourishment of the word of God that we realize that um, what joy we find in that journey. And so today, let's ask ourselves, let's ask ourselves, have we made our homes, our churches, pastures, where people who are hurting, who are broken, um, who need that extra grace can come and be refreshed in their spirit? And are we shepherds who are willing to go, not that extra mile, but who are willing to lay down all our interests simply to feed the sheep? Um, and once again, Jesus is inviting us to examine ourselves. Jesus, who is tender and loving, compassionate in every way, does not condemn us but invites us to examine ourselves. And he asks, do you love me more than these? And if we say, yes, Lord, you know we love you, then he invites us to feed his sheep. So if we feel that we have walked far from our calling, our Lord Jesus is quick to forgive, full of grace and mercy and forgiveness. So let us confess collectively and as individuals and ask the Lord to come in and transform us again with his uh, amazing love and grace. And so let us draw near to the Lord Jesus with repentant hearts because we know that there is much to be done. There are many who are lost out there, many believers who are lost. Um, and so we need to reach out to them with unconditional love and a commitment to our Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, forgive us, Lord, for the many times when we have said, yes, we love you, Lord, but we have failed to fulfill your greater calling in our lives. Help us, O oh Lord, to draw near to you. Help us and forgive us, renew our hearts and minds and strengthen us, strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may love and serve you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen.
the intercessions. Father, we thank you for your message today and for the privilege of hearing it. Jesus, we thank you that you have first demonstrated the life of a good shepherd by laying down your life for your sheep. We thank you for all the sheep you have brought into our lives and we pray for your grace to nurture, to share, to teach and to sacrificially care for them so that they too may know you as their father. Lord, we thank you for Dianthi, your child, who has brought your word to us today. We pray your blessings and protection on Dianthi, on Aruna and Joshua, that as a family, they will experience your strong bonds of love, compassion and joy, and that you will pour out your love and healing into the lives of all those they encounter. Lord, we pray for all Christians in our land that they will live and work together, united in purpose, as we fulfill your command in our land. We pray that your word will be taught under the guidance of your Holy Spirit, without dilution, and that your people will live by your word. We pray that your people will stand in the gap and intercede for our nation and bring your love into our land. Lord, we pray for our leaders, the President, Prime Minister and all members of government and officers in positions of authority, that you will give them the wisdom and strength to make wise, courageous decisions to guide this land through economic challenges in matters of health, justice, in law enforcement, in education, and every area which touches our daily lives. Lord, we pray for our children and our youth in our land, that they will grow in an environment of love and caring, of nurturing and discipline, and understand their God-given potential and purpose. We pray that they will grow to know you and love you, and that their lives will be transformed by you. Lord, we thank you that you have heard our prayers and thank you that you will never fail to answer. We ask all these in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord guide you always. May you be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. When you cry for help, may the Lord always say, Here am I, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah.